What's up guys, Coach Dane here with Coach Justin um, with Beartooth Performance and we're here to go over your rower. Now, looking at the startup of our rower, biggest thing is that we see with athletes just from the initial start is that when we sit down, we are in more of like a posterior pelvic tilt. We're almost like the backside of our hips are on that seat. And what we wanna see is more of like an anterior pelvic tilt where we are tilted a little bit more forward to help keep that nice low back and ultimately spine angle. From here, we're gonna address the foot plates. Um, so dependent on foot length, um, the strap should go right around the fattest part of your feet or the balls of your feet. Um, and then we'll pull those straps nice and tight. From here, <clears throat> Justin's going to go ahead and grab the handles. Make sure that we're looking kind of right around shoulder width or if our shoulders are wider than the handle, as far out on that handle as we can, making sure that all four fingers are wrapped around, are on the handle with our thumbs wrapped around. From here, shoulders will be in front of hips, so hips will be behind our shoulders, arms are nice and straight, heels are down. And that is our catch position in the beginning part of our movement. All right, as we get in to look at the movement pattern of our, of our row, it is important to remember that one, this video in of itself is designed to be kind of elementary in the standpoint of allow you guys to have the ability to hop on a rower and row efficient, efficiently. Rowing, just like most of our other forms of our monostructural work within the endurance um, aspects of our classes, is very much a skill based. So this can be as, as nuanced as you would like it to be. But again, the idea behind this video is to keep this somewhat elementary so that you guys can take these directly into the class and start improving your times. Now with that, with the sequence pattern of our row, it is very important to note that this is a lay dominant movement. So primarily, majority of the power that you're going to be creating is going to be off of that foot plate. So as Justin drives and extends his legs, it is important that he keeps his shoulders actually in front of his hips as legs extend. As legs extend from there, shoulders will lean back to that 11 o'clock and once shoulders reach that 11 o'clock, arms begin to pull. Now this is where we see a lot of people make a, a very common mistake. We are not going to hold the handle to the chest. So once you pull and teach, it's a quick extension back through those arms. And this recovery phrase is all about getting us back to that initial catch position. So it will go hips, so extend real quick back to that starting point. So arms extend, now hips will close as he's still keeping those legs straight. And then from there, this position is all about allowing him to be in that proper catch phase so we can go right back into that drive. So legs start to bend from here. As soon as heels start to come up, he does a quick drive off that leg again and return. So the idea as we're doing this is very important to make sure that that recovery phase of this is all about getting us back to proper catch position, right? From that catch position, we can put into all of the power into that foot plate. If we start getting into a position where we are in a bad position, backs rounded, right? I can extend with those legs, but it leaves my arms above, which then requires a lot of hips to try to pull back. So that's why one is imperative for that setup, that anterior tilt within those hips, shoulders nice and in front of hips at that one o'clock position, back nice and straight, arms are relaxed. Those are some quick tips for you guys to go ahead and increase your efficiency in the row.